In this activity, I'm going to model how the cell membrane works with active and passive diffusion as well as osmosis. To begin, I'm going to fill this tray with bubble solution. Using a trusty straw, I'm going to blow a bubble. This bubble represents our cell, with a thin membrane acting as a cell membrane. Let's use this toothpick as a model for a molecule the cell needs, let's say glucose. When I drop it through the membrane, you'll notice the membrane breaks. That would not be good for a cell. This plastic tube will be our model for a special protein found in the cell. It fits nicely in the membrane as seen by this graphic illustration. To ensure it doesn't break our modeled cell, I'm going to coat it in some of the bubble solution. Now, as I put it into the membrane, it won't break the bubble. Now this molecule can travel into the cell where it will serve its purpose. Notice that I can move the tube around the membrane. It is fluid and not fixed to one point. This happens with the proteins in the cell membrane as well. They are surrounded by the phospholipid bilayer shown here. Of course, the cell has many different proteins in their membrane. This straw, once coated in the bubble solution, also acts as a model for a protein. It allows different molecules in. When a membrane's protein assists the movement of molecules, it is commonly called facilitated diffusion. Some molecules are so small, they can easily fit between the lipid molecules in the membrane. Oxygen, for example, is small and needed in the cell. If there is more oxygen outside the cell than in, passive transport will occur. Passive transport does not require any energy, just like when you're driving and cars tend to spread out instead of staying clustered together in one lane. Passive transport acts the same. Water also travels freely across the cell membrane, but instead of passive transport, we call this osmosis. Too much water in a cell could be a bad thing, as the membrane can only stretch so much. To prevent this, cells pump out ions, atoms with either a positive or negative charge, by using those proteins we mentioned. Some proteins will work to take the low concentration of ions and move them to a higher concentration. The cell membrane has many different proteins, and each one plays chauffeur to particular clientele only. For instance, the protein that moves glucose will only move glucose. It will not transport an ion like potassium. Potassium has its own transport protein. That is the basics behind the cell membrane and active and passive transport.